Okay. Tony Stewart has joined us. Tony is now the three-time NASCAR Sprint Cup Series champion. And, uh, Tony, uh, a lot of adjectives described what you did over the chase. Uh, one I keep hearing is clutch. Talk about just a clutch performance by you over the last ten races. Uh, it's uh, uh, there. I would have lost every bet in the world if people would have said, hey, when you got in the chase that – we were going to win a race or we were going to win five races and win this thing, I would have bet against us. Um, and I, I learned a big lesson with our organization and, uh, you know, how strong a, a program we have and people-wise. I mean, it's everybody has good cars and, and good equipment, but, uh, you know, I'm sure Darian's mentioned it. It's, it's the people you have that, that make the difference. And, um, you know, we... When, when I said at Chicago that we didn't belong in this chase and, and we're taking a space that somebody else that probably was going to do a better job could have done, I, there were two things that could have happened with our group of guys, and they could have hung their head and, and said our guy doesn't believe in us, or, or, or they could do with exactly what they did, and that's never gave up. They dug their heels in, um, and they fought like the bad news bears, man. I mean, it was, it, we, were the, we were the team that nobody really thought had a shot beginning and at the beginning and uh you know the longer this went we we battled adversity at, at, at dover and, and texas and um you know we just kept fighting this whole group up here i mean darren's done an unbelievable job in this chase i mean we just to go and and be in the situations we've been in and tonight for example i mean to to a go in and have to fix a damaged race car twice go to the back and come back to the front and then to make the call that he made at the end there that um, my I need to take a nap <laughs> right now. My nerves are absolutely shot because when he said save fuel but run his pace and I'm like I'm running hard to run his pace and uh, so he pits about two laps later and I'm like I can't uh, you know we're, we're having the discussion I, I can't run that pace and save fuel and it's like so you got to tell me which one's more important right now, and I'm ha I'm deaf in one ear and can't hear on the other. So he said something, and I'm like, all right, whatever. I just got to go. So uh, then he pits, and then I go into fuel conservation mode, and it, it's really, really hard to watch guys just come barreling past you and uh, to stay disciplined enough to just stick to the plan and. Um, you know, I didn't question what the plan was or why the plan was. I just stuck to what he told me. And, you know, the lap that he called us in, he called us in going into turn one. And when I came off turn two, I let the fuel pressure drop. The motor laid down a little bit but was still running. And when I got to turn three, I shut it off, coasted around to turn four, kicked the switch, kicked the clutch, drove down pit road. We did the stop, and he's like, keep it revving, keep it running. And I'm sitting here staring at a fuel pressure gauge that's not building. It's sitting at two pounds. And we drop the jack, leave, we get 50 foot from the last timeline, and it dies. I mean, it's dead. It's out. And I'm like, we just lost this thing. And we roll about 100 feet, and it takes off, and the needle goes up, and life's good again. But... You know, you get on the racetrack, then the rain comes, and it's like, oh, man, what just happened? What, what You don't even know where you're at at that point. And uh, through the pit cycle to sit there and we're fourth at that point, it's, and Carl has to come back in, it's like, well, we, that is the call of the race, the call of the chase. Um, and it gave me the opportunity to do what I love doing best, and letting it all hang out and put it all on the line. And on the restart, we dove her down into three, and... That was the one probably hairy moment of anything that I did all day where I felt like, oh, I may have just lost this and uh, got loose underneath the, the 18 and the 2, and then it was a three-wide drag race down in the 3, and the way this thing drove all day, it, it was really good side bite, and I knew I could bury it down in the corner. I just didn't know if I was going to make the front end stick like the back, and you know, we drive back, back out with the lead, and it's at that point you just sit there and, go this this is all you can ask for is where we're at right now and whatever happens out of it happens and the funny part was listening to Darian actually get nervous at that point it's like the hard part it's done at that point we're, we're where we need to be but 
He goes, okay, I'm not giving you lap times anymore. I'm just going to give you intervals. And you can tell by the way he's saying that it, it, it kind of made me laugh in the car. And that actually relaxed me more than, than anything for the, those last 30 laps. And, uh, you know, he's just reading intervals off every lap. And we're just running hard enough to, you know, we didn't, it wasn't like we were saving much, but we were, we saved just enough that if we had a green, white checkered, I think we had saved our tires enough to, to do a good job at the end. But, uh, you know, getting in lap traffic, he was able to gain a little bit, and we were able to fight through some of those guys and, and pull back out. So uh, just um, you, you never are more excited to see a white flag in your lap, a lot, white flag waving in, in your life. You, uh, you at least take the white, and you know that if the caution comes out, it's over, and you only got to make it one more lap. And um, I'd love to know what my lap time was the last lap, but I don't think we gave up much. But it was, um, you know, it, it just was an awesome ending. And... You know, to get both of these guys beside me, their first championship, it's, man, it is an unbelievable feeling. It's, from the ownership side, it's it's more gratifying knowing that the investment that Gene's made in this sport and, and uh, you know, Darian's history in this sport and to be a part of getting them their first championship, that that on the ownership side for me is the gratifying part. Uh, it's, it's cool to win three championships as a driver and be in the company that we're in, but... Uh, if this wasn't an exciting race to watch, and if this wasn't one of the most exciting chases to to uh, watch from a fan standpoint, you got to go to a doctor immediately and get checked out. So uh, I, I I don't even know what else to say about it. Okay, let's take some more questions here. Jenna, and then uh, Dan, and then Dave. Jennifer, AP, you were making three and four wide passes tonight that we all were kind of left with our mouths open and then AJ said that I think Tony drove the best race of his life. Was this the best race of your life and is it fair to say you've been driving this way for four, five, six weeks? I think so. I mean, but as, as much as I'd love to beat my chest and say that I, I've been just doing something supernatural, I mean, I've had cars that have given me that confidence to, to do that. Um, and you know, to go four wide on the front stretch like that and to have the confidence that when you get to turn one that you can make the corner still. I mean, it, that that's a good handling race car that gives you that that confidence. So uh, it's like I said, we're, we, we've been a potent combination because our cars have been good and I've been feeling good. I mean, I've got, I've had confidence in these things and it, you you look at the first half of our year and how many just stupid things happen, luck-wise, that, that never happen. And we've, you know, at the end of the day, we would battle to a respectable finish out of it, but it, we are disappointed because we knew there was more there. And uh, it, it's really frustrating. But in the chase here, it just seemed like finally we got through that bad luck string and everything worked like it's supposed to. No curveballs, no change-ups, just business as usual. I mean, today was, was the first time I thought, oh, man, we, you know, when we... When he said, we got to come in, it's like oh, I didn't question it. I, I didn't know what was going on because I never even felt the impact. I mean, it, normally you feel something if you hit something with the nose of the car. And to hit it with the, the wire mesh like that, that screen, it, it, it just kills that. And I, how it didn't go through the radiator, I have no idea. But, um, you know, to, to have something like that actually go our way for once, it, it was nice to finally get that bad luck streak out of the way and, you know, get to where we could work on just doing what we do best. Man, I, man, I feel like I passed half the state of Florida. Um, 118 cars, a lot of cars to pass in one race. I don't care what series you're in or where you're at, but um, to do it under the circumstances and, and the pressure that we had today, I, I'm very, very proud of that. And uh, I, Man, I've been racing 31 years. I can't even remember races, some of the races I've won. But um, I, I would have to say that under the circumstances, i got to believe this is definitely uh, one of the greatest races of my life. Tony, you uh, drove with um, – you drove today like you were not going to lose this race. You were going to – either you were either going to win this thing or you're leaving it all on the track. I'm wondering over the last five years since your last championship when you were not in a position to – like this today or the last couple of weeks, was there ever a point where you thought, I may not get another shot at this, and then at the same time you thought, if I ever do, I am not going to leave anything on the track? I think after the last five years, the 
entire NASCAR nation thought they may not ever have a shot at another championship again. But, you know, I think the, the one thing that I was constantly reminded by the media was that we were the last guy to win one of these before Jimmy started that string. And, you know, you look at guys like Jeff and, and guys that have been successful in this series that uh, hadn't <coughs> won, and we, we had won a more recent one than those guys had. It, you, you can't discard it and say that you can't win it. It's just uh, what do you got to do to to get back on top? And, and uh, you know, I, I don't think anybody ever ever has that feeling. The day that you just say, I can't do it anymore, is the day you might as well just announce your retirement and find some young kid that is going to sit there and not have that attitude. So uh, I don't think you ever entirely say, I can't do this. It's just you wonder what, what do you have to do to get back in that position again. And... Uh, you know, these two guys beside me have been an extremely huge part of making that happen. Okay, let's go over here to the far right. Marty Smith, then we'll go to Kurt, and then Ryan. Uh, 